This video does not encourage violence. For a long time we didn't have such video formats. Crabs are one of the youngest aquarium inhabitants. Interest in keeping them at home has arisen quite recently. We already have a lot of crab videos on the channel, but today there will be something interesting. Why haven't crabs been bred in aquariums before? This is due to the fact that most species of crustaceans are inhabitants of the seas and oceans, so their habitat in fresh water is impossible. Only a few species have adapted to life in fresh or slightly salty water, such as the rainbow crab, which is distinguished not only by its magnificent color, but also by its large size. The rainbow crab is a crustacean from the order Decapods, Decapods, also known as the indigo crab for its characteristic coloration, and the patriot crab due to the fact that in nature is tightly attached to its home, perhaps the most popular crab that can be found at home. Also, crabs are considered quite unpretentious organisms, nevertheless, they demand a certain specific conditions. As the crab eats different types of insects with pleasure, I gave our crab a large cockroach. For example, this crab is very fond of Zophobus lava. But even cockroaches can diversify his diet. The rainbow crab cannot be called an aquatic inhabitant in the full sense of the word. Unlike most other crabs, its main habitat is dry land. It needs water just during the molding period and for breeding. And this is Pitisis scorpion. It is also an inhabitant of the land, which for a certain time can even be under water without harm to its body. On our channel we also have a lot of videos about scorpions. In one of them I showed how Pitis' scorpions behave underwater. Scorpions and crabs have some similarities. For example, they have claws, but they belong to different classes. Scorpions are arachnids and crabs are crustaceans. The question arises, if they have common features, how will a scorpion or crab perceive each other? I already know from my own experience that scorpions are quite aggressive, but crabs can also be the first to attack their prey. Moreover, crab claws are larger in comparison with scorpion claws. And I'm sure that the grip force of crab claws is much higher than the grip force of scorpion claws. But as you can see, the crab does not show aggressiveness towards the scorpion, most likely in nature. The crab will try to avoid meeting with the scorpion, if it suddenly happened. There are mangrove forests in Bali, and crabs are the inhabitants of this island. There are also many scorpions on the island, so a meeting of a crab and a scorpion in wildlife is quite possible. It seems to me that such meetings are always peaceful. This is a really interesting fact that most likely you did not know about. If you enjoyed, be sure to like this video, write any comment to promote the video. And that's all for now. Bye everyone! This video does not call for violence. The video includes scenes of feeding aquarium inhabitants. The real adventure awaits you today. We're opening the beach season and going to a desert island that will be colonized by hundreds of pioneer cockroaches. Many predatory sea monsters live off the coast of this island. But let's start with the backstory. This uninhabited island should have an underground prison, where pioneer cockroaches will hide in the future. The underground prison was built from hundreds of stone bricks. And the most important thing was to develop special steps that could easily descend into this stone dungeon. Of course, the walls of the prison must be strong to withstand any natural conditions, such as moisture coming from the depths of the island. 
as well as the huge load that the walls will receive from all sides, since the dungeon will be almost at sea level. Stone bricks were laid with a special strong salmon mortar according to ancient technology, taking into account all possible technical solutions of that time. The prison even has a fire pit that can light up the darkest place in the castle. Indeed, there once was a castle on the surface of the island, but unfortunately it did not survive. Since in those days there were many pirate attacks on the island, for the purpose of profit. There were really difficult times for the castle and its inhabitants. One of the shells fired from the ship's cannon finally destroyed the castle on the surface. The island began to be particularly overgrown with various vegetation. Initially, there were practically no living creatures of the coast of this island. But hundreds of years later, due to global climate change, many marine and dangerous inhabitants began to gradually appear in the sea. A little later, another large monster appeared. It differed in color and was more aggressive. These three monsters constantly divided the territory of the coast among themselves. If you watch them, you can see their unfriendly intentions. Sometime later, a huge predator fish appeared. It could drag any cockroach under the water. These fish are ready to wait for prey of the coast of the island for hours. I'm even afraid to imagine what will happen to a cockroach if it gets on the surface of the sea. Well, as soon as these huge monsters with close sea fish in front of them, they begin to hunt for it. It turns out that the island is dangerous not only for cockroaches, but also for all the inhabitants that can disappear from the island through natural selections. And just recently, a huge creature appeared on the coast in the sea. It was capable of even destroying ships and dragging entire detachments of colonizers underwater. At the moment, this is the king of all monsters. So, the day came when a hundred colonizing cockroaches reached the island and began to populate it. Due to the long journey by sea, the cockroaches ran out of all their food and water supplies. Some of their team lost their minds out of hopelessness and began to run to the coast of the island to drink seawater. Another part of the cockroach team was evaluating the destruction of the castle and using their modern engineering ideas to decide how best to restore the castle. Many cockroaches were preoccupied with finding fresh water, but unfortunately exploring the island would take longer than they expected. So more and more cockroaches appeared on the seashore, which were very thirsty. At this time, the smallest monster was sneaking up to them from the depth of the sea, which had so far been watching the new settles and probably studying their weak points for a better attack in the future. Another, more aggressive monster hunted predatory fish that hid in the reefs of the sea. While the clown monsters were busy with part of the fish, one of the most dangerous fish approached the shore of the island. By behavior of the fish, you can see that it is waiting for an annotative cockroach. But the fish are unlucky this time, as the giant crayfish decided to catch all other competitors that might eat cockroaches without its knowledge. It turns out that this island really has many of its secrets and most importantly dangerous and unpredictable moments for cockroaches. Some of the inhabitants of the island are trying to establish connections among themselves in order to catch prey as a team. And then the moment came. The most gigantic monster woke up, which made the first raid on the island. And it's only day 
and the cockroaches need to somehow survive the first night on the island. So far, the giant crab has given a simple warning to the cockroaches by stealing a huge stone from the castle from them. But for some reason, the cockroaches ignored his warning. In the meantime, the first victim from the detachment of the colonialists appeared, which was carried into the sea by huge coastal waves. And of course, within a few hours, the giant crab made many raids on the island, but the cockroaches continued to ignore it and go about their business until their first night came. For eight hours of living on the island, the cockroaches had a hard time. Their ship was sunk with part of the crew. Most likely unique battles took place to save the ship, but the cockroaches lost the opportunity to swim away from the island. Many colonialists even floated on the surface of the sea. But even that is not all. The main problems of the cockroaches were waiting on the island itself. A giant crab caused multiplied destructions overnight. And all only because the cockroaches ignored dozens of his warnings to leave the island. During this difficult night, dozens of missing colonizers appeared. The main part of the cockroach team hid on the highest palm tree. Now it became clear to cockroaches that jokes with a huge crab can end badly. In fact, many more interesting events would take place on this island. Actually, it's only the first 24 hours on the island. Imagine what happens in a week. I hope you enjoy this format. We have spent a lot of time and made an effort to find this island for you. Therefore, do not be too lazy to like this video. By the way, do you think this rowdy crap should be excluded from the game? The destruction he inflicted on the island in one day cannot be compared to what he can do in a week. To do this, we came up with an interactive for you. In this story, you decide how life will continue on this island. If you think that the crab should be removed, write in the comments, remove the crab. If you think that the crab should stay, write, leave the crab. Today we will continue an exciting adventure. For those who doesn't know what we are talking about, I recommended watching the first part of this adventure. We have it on our channel. Today we will visit a desert island, which was colonized by a hundred cockroaches. And of the coast of the island there are many predatory monsters that periodically catch cockroaches on the shop. This is a special monster in the sea, a destroyer, which is able to come out of the water onto land and destroy everything that comes in its way. In the last issue, it caused a lot of destruction to the island and even sank an entire ship with sailors. By the way, in the first part we had a vote, and most of you voted to keep this monster for the new video. A whole week passed since cockroaches, the colonialists settled on a desert island. And that's what happened there in a week. For seven days, the largest destroyer monster made raids on the island and periodically caught the inhabitants of the island. The cockroaches created search parties to find the missing, but their attempts were in vain. Every day the monsters stole stone from the island and took them to the sea. Most of the buildings that were created by the engineers were destroyed by the monster. The palm trees on which the survivors could hide were uprooted by the monster along with the root. The monster also dragged some remains of palm trees into the sea. The remaining shadow that remains of the castle is an underground dungeon. But the monster was so angry that it blocked the entrance to the dungeon with huge stones. When the cockroaches explored the island, they found an active volcano. 
that woke up and caused a huge earthquake. The earthquake took another part of the saddles due to the tsunami that arose, which potentially hit part of the island. At this time, huge prehistoric fish began to attack the drowning townspeople, and the island was half submerged, and the castle dungeon was irretrievably flooded. The surviving cockroaches have lost every possible hiding place. The island turned out to be so inhospitable that the team of pioneers was haunted by danger and failure, like it was cursed. And now you can understand why this island remained uninhabited for hundreds of years. Of course, the failures of the team did not end there. Due to such events, a rupture occurred in the tectonic plate, releasing a new monster that had been sleeping in the underground cave for a thousand years. This monster was an and could be found not only in the sea but also on land. It could only mean one thing. New troubles awaited the survivors of the island, which they had not yet guessed about. By the way, the monster nicknamed Destroyer won the Battle of Smaller Monsters, which it ate during these seven days. And for you researchers, there is a mystery. Who was eaten by the Destroyer? Write your version in the comments. The food supplies that the pioneers brought to the island were eaten by the monster every day. Hunger began on the island and rebellious cockroaches appeared. They wanted to plot and change the Curian government. There were rumors among the pioneers that their leader lost so many cockroaches, not only because he made a mistake with the island for the settlement, but because he ineptly commanded the defensive army of cockroaches. The next day, a huge new dragon came to the settlement. But as it turned out, some surviving cockroaches sacrificed one cockroach from the tribe to the dragon throughout the week. The dragon came to the tribe's defense and tried to eat the smaller dragon, which was already ready to go on land and destroy the settlement. The cockroaches found an alley on the island. Also, last week a team of five cockroaches built a raft and sailed away from the island in an unknown direction, hoping to find help and save the tribe of pioneers. When they left the island, a lot of monsters tried to eat them, but this time luck was on the side of the cockroaches. Do you think the cockroaches will be able to find help? What can expect cockroaches in the sea? You can find out about this in the next part of the video, if, of course, you like this format. And so that I know for sure whether to continue this story, be sure to like and write a comment below this video. Will you wait for the third part? As you can see, your decision to leave the crap really led this story to new events. This video does not call for violence. The video shows the reproduction process of the cordyceps mushroom. If you are an impressionable person, please stop watching this video. Exactly four months ago we got the mycelium of the mushroom from the TV series The Last One of Us, this mushroom is called cordyceps. The mushroom is parasitic on insects and can literally sprout from the head of an insect infested with it. Over the course of these four months, we conducted our big experiment in infecting insects with this unusual fungus. Sometimes it seemed to me that the experiment gets out of control, and had to refine the algorithm of action to get the correct result. Cordyceps is a genus of ergot fungi, pyranomycetes, which parasitize on certain kinds of insects. That's not a misunderstanding, the fungus does not parasitize all insects in a row. There are more than 400 different species of cordyceps in nature, some of them, Cordyceps genensis, Cordyceps tuberous, Cordyceps military, Cordyceps graceful, Cordyceps aphyaglossus, Cordyceps japonica. And finally, after four months, I looked into the closed aquarium and saw the offshoots sticking out of the soil. Cockroaches at the same time were not infected, or they cannot go through all the stages of development of the fungus and die. 
during four months of the experiment different kinds of insects have been used, namely, Turkmen cockroaches, larvae of zophobas, large kinds of cockroaches, beetles of zophobas, migratory locusts. As well as in the middle of the experiment, protozoan microorganisms that were only in a certain month temporarily appeared. To extract the finished fruit from the soil, I carefully pull the cordyceps fruit along with the body of the larva, after which I need to wash the mushrooms from the excess soil and proceed to examine them in detail. The smell of these larvae is relatively pleasant, it is difficult to describe my impressions but it is like the smell of penicillin mixed with a distant, faint smell of a dead larva. On the whole, the smell is pleasant. Some salted fish smell many times worse. For this reason, the aversion to such larvae did not arise in me. Next, I decided to break off the stroma mushroom is a sprout sticking out of the head of the larva, and it comes off. Along with part of the head of the larva. Inside the body of the larva there are no internal organs. This suggests that the fungus completely absorbs all the internal organs of the insect, filling them with itself. And the insect serves as a shell for the fungus. Perhaps protecting it from external factors. This allows the fungus to develop and continue to parasitize inside the insect. The series The Last of Us is about an uncontrollable pandemic that swept the entire world and brought mankind to the brink of extinction. Is it possible to cure cordyceps if it could infect humans? I think this question interests many people. In fact, if cordyceps manages to penetrate the human nervous system, then this infection cannot be cured. Because our brain is protected by the blood-brain barrier, which prevents the penetration of various toxins, microorganisms, cellular and other immune system factors. It perceives them as foreign. This leads to the fact that it is difficult to treat diseases of the nervous system, because a large number of therapeutic agents are not passed. It turns out that a person at this moment cannot be infected with cordyceps because of high body temperature and a different nervous system, but in case of mega, fast, mutation of cordyceps it is not excluded. At the moment, cordyceps is used in medicine to treat and prevent various diseases, especially in Asian countries, including China. So to say, with the initial place of spreading has already been determined. Besides, the human nervous system is organized differently, unlike insects, to which cordyceps is adapted, and humans do not have chitin, like ants and other insects. Once again, this is only possible with rapid mutation, in other cases, scientists will be able to notice this phenomenon and take action. The optimal temperature for growth and development of most fungi, including cordyceps, is plus 18 to plus 25 degrees. But the human temperature is between 35 and 37 degrees Celsius. This makes it impossible for fungal infection to spread in the human body. To check curative and strengthening properties of cordyceps I decided to make an experiment on myself. I will use this mushroom in food. There are several ways of using it. The first way, eat 0,4 to 0,5 grams in dry form in the morning on an empty stomach 30 minutes before a meal. People weighing 60 kilograms or more can safely eat the roots as a whole, caterpillar plus sprout. You can ask the mushroom with a glass of warm water. The second method, put cordyceps overnight in a glass with boiling water and cover with a lid. In the morning, drink the resulting tincture and eat mushrooms. The third way, tincture of alcohol. Recommended proportions, 1 gram per 100 milliliters of vodka, you can do 10 grams per 0.7 liter of strong alcohol. Here you need to cut or break cordyceps into small pieces, and pour it into the alcohol. It is necessary to let infuse 3 to 4 weeks. Use the tincture of 1 tablespoon once a day on an empty stomach 30 minutes before a meal. I chose for myself the second way of use, well, if you want to continue this story, I can shoot the final part of the video after the use of this mushroom and share how I feel. I'm ready to eat this mushroom whole on camera. If you want to see it, be sure to support this video with a like, as well as write in the comments that you want to continue the video. This video was created for significant purposes. There are moments of dissection in the video. If you are an impressionable person, do not watch this video. Just recently I received a small container that contained a frozen manis shrimp. He got this name for obvious reasons. The whole point is that he has very similar limbs to the brain manis. Even his body vaguely resembles the body of a brain manis. The prey manis shrimp that stuns its prey has a slightly different structure of the limbs. We'll also figure it out today. Manis shrimp most often live in coral reefs. 
This is where they show their rivalry in the race for survival. Because they are real born predators. They have a bright beautiful color. And this is perhaps the only thing that can win your sympathy. Many shrimp are also prone to outbursts of aggression. These highly territorial arthropod sociopaths do not hesitate to pounce on anyone who get close to them, inflicting heavy blows. The second pair of their pectoral limbs have been transformed into the most powerful melee weapons that exist in nature. The click caused by the mantis shrimp can leave a serious bruise or break the wall of the aquarium. With an average body size of 20 centimeters and a mass of about 100 grams, the impact force of these animals reaches 1,500 newtons, and the speed of the limb movement is more than 20 meters per second. For comparison, the punch of Olympic level boxers is 3,400 newtons and 9 meters per second. But they are in completely different weight categories. Not surprisingly, many shrimp are located at the top of the food pyramid of the coral reef. Now I'm starting to dissect one of the representatives of the praying mantis shrimp. And at the same time, I will tell you more about them. Because this is a really a unique creation. This vast group includes more than 450 species from 15 related families, which are divided into two groups according to the method of obtaining food. Our mantis shrimp belongs to the spearmen. The spearmen have working claws and an in sharp and long points that are thrown out like the blade of a spring knife. These crayfish prefer to hunt by ambushing relatively soft prey, mostly fish, pressing them through with a single throw. The claws of the drummers resemble small and evil hummers, with which they having previously tried on, break through the shells of mollusks. Having removed the upper scale from the back, which is called the carapace, we can immediately observe the nervous system of the praying mantis cancer. Next, I continue to open its tail. Despite the force of impact, mantis shrimp cannot boast of powerful triceps. Their harpoons and hammers are accelerated by ordinary mechanics. The process is similar to accurate. Try throwing an arrow with your hand. You will never achieve such throwing power as when using a bow. Its elasticity allows you to slowly gain much more mechanical energy and throw it away with one relaxation of your fingers. And the elastic protein base allows it not to collapse and not crack even with severe deformation. The saddle bends in the longitudinal direction, the organic layer is stretched, and the entire structure accumulates elastic potential energy. This releases so much energy that short pulses of light flash in the water. For you, I have prepared several parts of the mantis shrimp, which we will examine under powerful microscope. This is what the tail of the mantis shrimps looks like. This is what swimming legs look like. Blade sharp jaws look like a huge saw under magnification. This is what scaphoserid looks like under a microscope. 
For those who do not understand what it is, I advise using Google to study the structure of Mantis Strip. This is what the cornea of the mantis shrimp looks like. The vision of the mantis shrimp is even more amazing than their striking technique and is considered the most complex in the entire living world. They have only two eyes, but they move independently of each other and three purples blacken in each. This is what a telson looks like under a microscope. This is the tail of a mantis shrimp. For me personally, the tail part is very similar in structure to the tail of a shrimp. And even the smell of a defrosted mantis shrimp has a shrimp tone. This is what part of the brain looks like. This is chitin from the upper tail. I know that this release may seem complicated, and for this I advise you to independently study the structure of mantis shrimp, and even better read about them and watch a video with their hunting. These are truly unique creatures that deserve special attention. I hope I didn't overload you with information, and if you were interested, be sure to like this video. The real adventure awaits you today. Today we will open the beach season and visit a desert island that was colonized by hundreds of cockroaches. Well, off the coast of this uninhabited island there are many predatory sea monsters that regularly cause problems. This uninhabited island has an underground prison in which our inhabitants were supposed to hide. But the volcano that woke up in the depth of the island with the help of an earthquake potentially submerged the island underwater, due to which the dungeon of the destroyed castle was flooded. During this time small groups of hundreds of cockroach colonizers remained, and the main part of the team died or was eaten by monsters. Look at the state of the colonial base after a month, and in the most remote corner of the island, the destroyer monster slept peacefully. While the monster was sleeping, the surviving cockroaches decided to restore order on the island and prepare the landscape for a new building. The task was not easy, because the labor force was small, and it took too much time to collect huge bricks from the old castle. And yet, the destroyer was so angry at the settlers that he gnawed through their communications, probably hoping that it would be much more difficult for the cockroaches to defend themselves this way. Just look how cunning this monster turned out to be. Despite many problems, the cockroaches began to build a castle, which they decided to call the Fortress of Hope. The new building was built from hundreds of stone bricks that were several hundred years old. The fortress should have a high tower so that it would be more convenient for the warriors to notice any monster coming out of the ocean in time, in general. This time luck was on the side of the surviving cockroaches. They managed to build a castle. The only problem was the lack of salmon mortar. The cockroaches didn't have time to green stones to create salmon, 
because the monster could wake up at any moment. Well, those who tried to draw water for construction were eaten by giant fish. The design of the castle was not very reliable due to such problems, but it's still better than spending the night out in the open. In the depths of the jungle, a group of cockroaches found a new monster, and through periodic sacrifices, a group of researchers managed to agree and make an ally who was supposed to scare away the destroying monster from the castle grounds. One day, when the destroyer was already preparing to enter the castle, the Todd jumped in front of him and croaked so loudly that the whole earth trembled. The sound reverberated out the walls of the castle and became so loud that all the inhabitants of the island heard it. The evil crab froze for a moment, frightened by this unexpected sound. The Todd says with contempt, Destroyer! Leave us alone! The castle on the island belong to the cockroaches, not to you! The destroyer was not accustomed to such resistance and his anger only intensified. The crab was surprised that the giant Todd was in its path, but was not going to stop. The crab had an old monster lie. Who knows how to disqueeze himself in any conditions? And the crab persuaded the praying mantis to catch one caretaker of the castle and eat him. Unfortunately, the Todd had poor eyesight and could not notice the mantis sneaking along the walls of the castle. His movements were graceful and precise, and his spiked paws were like hooks with which he caught cockroaches. He hid well and was invisible in his art. He quietly, imperceptibly eliminated opponents. Because of the master of disquise, the cockroaches didn't notice the praying mantis, and only in the last seconds they realized that they had fallen into a trap. It was a truly unique union of two monsters, in which the crab, who picked up the tactics of a quiet attack, was so far the winner so far. Sometime later, the cockroaches began to suspect that strange things were happening near the castle. For some unexplained reason, local residents of the castle began to disappear, while the great toad was constantly on guard of the fortress and the local population. The cockroaches even began to suspect that the toad ate cockroaches and began to follow her. In general, the Todd really behaved strangely, and after a while the cockroaches decided to refuse its services in protecting the castle and start an investigation of who is still kidnapping the inhabitants in the castle. The Todd realized that there would be no more sacrifices for her and decided to move away from the settlement. And the destroyer immediately noticed this. His eyes were only filled with vengeance, and he didn't even care that his ally Prey Mendes was on the walls of the fortress. The destroyer decided to destroy the castle and show his superiority. The continuation of this story depends only on you. So if you want a continuation, be sure to write in the comment I want a continuation. And don't forget to like and support the series. And that's all for now. Bye, everyone. This video does not call for violence. The video shows the process of feeding a mealworms. Hello, I managed to get about 10,000 mealworms. A large floor beetle or a floor beetle is an insect with complete transformation from the coleoptera odor. Economy floor worms are its larval form. Mealworms were already known to ancient authors and are mentioned under the name Tenebrion in Varus de Rustica. Today I decided to give such worms a big deal scorpion to see what happens to it if it is put into the mealworms. In experience, many people not understand what the catch is. 
But we all know how voracious mealworms can be. Personally, I would call them piranhas among the lava and worms. Due to the large number of hungry worms, they quickly eat everything that come across. I have just slowed a scorpion to 10,000 hungry mealworms, and they immediately set to their favorite business – to eat everything edible. By the way, this is not the first time I have done such an experiment. And on our channel you can already find a video of how I lowered a chicken head to such worms, and even once lowered even a dead mouse, from which only one skeleton remained. Such worms are most often found in the bins of floor warehouses, bakeries and mills. The female lays from 150 to 200 white eggs, developing lava feed on bread grains, floor, bran and baked bread. The same lava are also able to feed on animal substances. Dry corpses of mice, birds, feed the remnants it is. They are also found in devacodes and sparrow nests. In addition to floor products and grains, they eat starch, seeds of garden crops, dried fruits and dried meat, fabrics and wool. The related species Tenebra obscurus breeds preferring tissue in animal matter, while Tenebra opacus breeds in rodent wood. A large mealworm can chew through plastic bags. Biologists from Stanford University found that the beetle eat polystyrene, which is very difficult to recycle. They found that 90% of the products of polystyrene digestion leave the body of the beetle a day after eating it. The rest of the polystyrene is absorbed by the beetle, and no signs of poisoning bite were found in the beetle. Two days after eating the plastic, only 0.27% of the hexabromacycladecane toxin remains in the organisms of the beetle, which is added to the plastic for heat resistance. It turns out that in the future such worms can be useful in the processing of plastic. For example, the half-life of polystyrene samples with complete degradation will take from 100 to 300 years, and with partial degradation from 10 to 50 years. Now, back to watching the scorpion I got from the mealworms the next day. All that is left of the scorpion is the tail, claws and paws, and if you look closely, then this is a dense, chitinous shell that the worms could not eat for such a period of time. All internal organs and soft tissues of the scorpion were completely in. That's how unusual they are. I am very interested in watching such worms. By the way, write in the comment what else to give these worms to eat. If you enjoyed and enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. Do not forget to also subscribe to the channel. That's all for now. Bye, everyone. Hello. Today we will address one of the most pressing issues of the modern world – ecology. Our world faces numerous problems, and one of them is the ease of plastic recycling. For instance, approximately 90 of consumers use polyethylene bags as garbage bags for packaging food, clothing, household appliances or for any other purposes. The decomposition period of a regular plastic bottle is 200 years, while a polyethylene bag can remain in the soil for 100 to 200 years. Humanity discards 275 million tons of plastic waste annually, over 8 million tons of it end up in the world ocean. I'm sure you have noticed how the seas, oceans and even your cities have become polluted in the last few decades. The issue of plastic recycling and disposal is highly relevant today. That is why many scientists are seeking ways to clean nature from household polythylene. 
Sometimes to solve the problem of environmental cleanup, we need to turn to nature itself. For example, researchers fed beetles with plastic for two weeks and found that 100 beetles consume more than 300 grams of plastic within 12 hours, whereas 100 moth larvae consume approximately 100 grams within the same time frame. Thus, it became clear that the Zephobus moro beetle breaks down chemical plastic significantly faster than the moth. 900 Zephobus larvae are subsigned to facilitate the recycling of household plastic, bags, polystyrene, styrofoam and polyethylene packaging for a family of three or four people. Researchers from the University of Cambridge discovered that larvae of the wax moth, which feed on bees' wax, can also recycle plastic. Experiments conducted by British scientists show that this insect can break down the chemical bonds in plastic in the same way it digests wax. Plastic pollution of soil and water bodies, such as the world ocean, is one of the largest environmental problems. 80 million tons of polyethylene, used for producing bags and other packaging materials, are produced worldwide every year. This material decomposes over hundreds of years. However, the lava of the moth can chew holes in a polyethylene bag in less than an hour. Currently, researchers are working on accelerating the recycling process using lava. They are studying the chemical substance used by the insects for this purpose. Scientists believe that microbes living inside the caterpillar play a crucial role in this process. If we are fortunate enough to fully understand the entire process by which the insect recycles plastic, it would be a significant breakthrough in the fight against environmental pollution. In our case, we propose using mealworm larvae, which can consume nearly a square inch 4 to 4 inches or 10 to 10 centimeters of thin polyethylene in just one hour. Today, we are conducting a fascinating experiment to determine how well mealworms handle different cellophane bags. For this purpose, we have prepared five types of bags with the same surface area. I have numbered the bag samples, which we will feed to 10,000 mealworm larvae over the course of one hour. Today we are using food wrap film, biodegradable bag, trash bag, recycled plastic bag and regular polyethylene bag. Within just one hour, the mealworm larvae performed well with the biodegradable bag, which is not surprising since it contains cornstarch. The larvae also easily consumed the thinnest single-use polyethylene bag. I was most surprised by the result with the recycled plastic bag. The larvae also ignored it quite effectively. The trash bag, food wrap film and dense regular polyethylene bag showed poor results. You might be interested to know if feeding on polyethylene and plastic affects the mealworm lava. The answer has already been confirmed by scientists from the University of Cambridge. The consumption of plastic has no impact on the mealworm lava, and the level of toxic substances in the lava's bodies after one day is only 2700 of a percent of the total ingested mass. The lava continue their life cycle and can continue to recycle plastic. This is a promising prospect for waste disposal using nature itself. I hope you enjoyed this experiment. And if you found it interesting, please like and leave a comment indicating whether you would like to see further experiments like this. We would also appreciate your ideas, so feel free to share them in the comments. Let's brainstorm together on how to save the environment. That's all for now. Goodbye, everyone.